Oh yeah, we're still working on this thing here. Um, okay, so last we left off, we thought we had everything fixed, but there's still obviously transducer issues or some sort of issue that now says that, oh, I'm running too slow, I'm going to turn myself off. Um, even though we were getting a signal on the scope. So, well, we couldn't actually record or observe the problem on the scope because, well, it happens just way too fast. But, what do you do if you want to watch something in slow motion or uh, you want to watch it later? You record it. And that's where that HP 3960 uh, recorder I got comes in real handy. Even though it's uh, magnetic tape based, um, I'm just setting it to 15 inches per second of tape, so it's like 16 minutes to a full reel there, which is a lot. And down here, I have one probe attached to the transducer output, and then I have another probe attached to the conditioned transducer output. And they run into the recorder, and then I have two channels running out to the Tektronix scope over on the desk. And really, I should be also be recording it, at the same time so I can hear the drive spinning up and spinning down because there is an extra audio uh, track on the tape that, that lets you do that but every microphone I've attached so far doesn't want to work no matter what I set the volume to so I'm not gonna screw with that for now but anyways it's all tuned it's all ready to go um, I'm gonna stop recording now and let's take a look at the results when we're done oh by the way um, if you're gonna do this Make sure you have a fan ready and on the standby. Actually, turn it on before you even start doing anything because when you open this up, you're basically removing all the ventilation in the unit. So you gotta keep the heat sinks and the chips and the high powered resistors cool somehow. And that fan's gonna be the only thing that'll in most cases uh, save a lot of the components inside here. Okay, just for kicks, here it is recording right now. I'm going to have both channels being logged, and you can see them on the scope uh, live. But, uh, other than that, so far it's been five failed spin-ups so far, so we should have enough data out of all of these to be able to produce... Oh, and there it spins down again. You see over there, and it just kind of spreads out as it dies. Go. And okay, so we're gonna finish off all of this testing here and begin evaluating it. Okay, so we're all queued up here, and I've got my scope here set up. And now let me just show you how it's all set up. Cue the tape. And now this here is gonna indicate our zero volts. This is basically our low, like low zero. Up here is five volts. Now the wobble that you're seeing here right now is brought in by the tape deck itself. This isn't actually the drive. There's still a couple of things i got to figure out. Um, for now, I can switch it and... Also, channel 1 is still our unconditioned input straight from the transducer. Channel 2, which is currently high, um, is the conditioned output um, from the LS14. I, oh, it's been a while now. I've forgotten. Anyways, this should give us nice strong highs and lows. But otherwise... Between the two, we should see something close to a nice uh, ladder shape when the drive spins up. And it'll... Um, actually, I'll show you. So, I'm going to stop here. I'm going to sit... Oh, and that... There we go. And... So, the drive will spin up. And there's that uh, formation starting to appear there. Let me see if I can get the light out of there. There we go. And it is, for the most part, pretty much a mirror. And the drive is now up to speed. And yes, there is... You can see there is a bit of glitching here, but if I just switch that off... Oh, there we go. Um, what you're seeing there is actually one of the notches on the timing disc is a little bit bigger than the other. And that's just that showing up right there. And... On the other side, well, I guess you can kind of see it there. It's not really happy with the uh, delay time I'm giving it. But basically, it looks exactly the same. 
Um, with the exception of this kickback here, which is kind of suspicious. And I'm not entirely sure what's causing that. Um, yet. But I'm just going to reset it here. And where are we on the counter right here? I'm using the counter off the tape deck to see where I am. And i got a couple more seconds here before it spins down. Um, yeah, there is that glitchiness I'm getting there, too. I'm not entirely sure if that's the result of just the electronics that I'm using here, some noise, or if a component itself is basically tripping out every so often. So, I'm just going to actually fast forward this here a little bit. Oh, I've jammed it. There we go. I have... Oh, I see what I've done. In a couple of moments here, you'll see it spin down. And it's not really all eventful in here. Um, and there it goes. I don't think I did this right then. There we go. And it spins down. Still holding its square shape. And then basically, boom, there you go. And this is actually kind of stuck in a state in between high and low right now. But that's okay. And it resets because I didn't do, did the test again. Um, well, those are results of this test, at least. I'm going to have to do more research on it.